Hey everyone, and welcome to another video. With Curses Back, Demonic Circle, Baseline, and even Howl of Terror, finally instant cast again, Warlocks are rejoicing. Today in this video, we're going to be taking an in-depth look at Warlocks going into Shadowlands, giving you a short overview on how each spec is performing, before then covering all the info you need to get going as soon as Shadowlands launches, including the best races, talents, covenants, soulbinds, conduits, and even legendaries. This guide has been produced with our Warlock consultant and Cloud9 AWC team member Chanimals, who you can catch streaming here at twitch.tv slash Chanimally. Before we get started, a small disclaimer that the information in this guide has been put together using the latest beta build. We'll be releasing a refresher guide before the beginning of Season 1, which will cover any outdated information along with a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and even which comps are performing the best. So be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified the moment we release any new content. But enough talking, let's jump into it. So to begin, let's talk about specs. What's going to be the best and go-to spec going into Shadowlands? Well, honestly, straight away, we can disregard demonology altogether. Demo hasn't seen anything new at all, revolving still heavily around a ramp-up mechanic that just does not cut it for Arena. Destro, thankfully, has seen a lot of nerfs going into the expansion as well. The removal of Entrenched in Flame and Grimoire of Supremacy, coupled with nerfs to Focused Chaos, as well as Vision of Perfection, no longer being a thing has made destruction a lot weaker. Although we do still think that Destro will have a place in the meta with a more instant damage based build, the current spec for Warlocks right now is by far Affliction. But why is that? Well, Affliction has received a pretty nice overhaul with a lot of noticeable changes. Unstable Affliction no longer stacks on the same target, nor is your Soul Shard a spender. You now spend Soul Shards on a new ability, Malefic Rupture, which deals damage to every target in your line of sight based on how many dot effects are active on those targets. This has brought back the return of Warlock being a more rot-based caster, where multi-dotting paired up with Malefic Rupture brings a ton of AoE pressure something they lacked in BFA due to the only real damage output being Curse of Agony. There's also been some really nice changes like Instant Howl of Terror, Demonic Circle Baseline, and even the Return of Curses. But what's helped push Affliction into a great spot and the go-to Warlock spec is two main things. First, a buff to their Unstable Affliction. Not the damage of the dot itself, but the Dispel Protection. This makes it now incredibly difficult to just spam Dispel UA and Warlock dots in general, which was a huge issue for Affliction. You spent 3-4 to four globals applying your dots just to have them all removed with one Dispel, so you can never really build up any pressure. The second change is two new PvP talents, which are Rampant Afflictions and Rapid Contagion, but we'll cover this more in depth a little later in the video. But what still needs to ideally be buffed or nerfed about Affliction? Well, there are still issues in survivability. Affliction in specific lacks that extra survivability that Destro Mastery or Soul Link from Demo provides. A lot of these survivability issues, though, come with a lot of classes not being tuned correctly. For example, Sub Rogues or Windwalkers do way too much damage on beta right now, so that's not a problem that Warlocks suffer alone. While Affliction does still suffer a major problem in the efficiency of their globals ever since the removal of Amplify Afflictions in Legion. This leaves you with very little time to do anything other than apply dots. As for nerfs, I think it's fair to say that Malefic Rupture does a little bit too much damage and could be toned down. By the way, if you're enjoying the video so far, a sub to the channel would be incredible. Alright, so now we know a little more about the specs, so let's take a look at race choice. If you're playing Alliance, there is really only one real option if you're serious about PvP, and that's Human. Human, of course, gives access to the racial every man for himself, which is essentially a PvP trinket with a longer CD that only affects stuns. This can be combined with the trinket Gladiator's Relentless Brooch in order to obtain the benefit of Relentless while still having the fallback of every man for himself. Alternatively, if you're not a fan of humans, Void Elf for their pushback resistance and short teleport, or even Dwarfs for their defensive benefit are weaker, but still solid choices. Now, if you're playing Horde, there is again only one real choice if you're wanting to optimize, and that's of course Orc. As you're able to pair up hardiness with a trinket to gain the best of both worlds, having reduced stun duration and still the safety net of a get out of CC trinket. Not to mention the added damage of Blood Fury. As for Horde alternatives, we really recommend sticking with Orcs. They are just completely unrivaled on the Horde side. 
although if you must, then the only other option is Undead for Will of the Forsaken, but you'll be at a very noticeable disadvantage. Okay, so you've picked your race, now let's cover talents. As mentioned, we'll be focusing on Affliction as it's set to be the go-to spec. If anything changes, we will be releasing an updated guide with all the information you need for Destro. Anyway, starting with the level 15 row, the best option is going to be Inevitable Demise. This provides you a stacking buff which can be translated to some big burst with Drain Life. Inevitable Demise is also the least global intensive ability, requiring the least maintenance compared to the others, which is much needed for Affliction as you heavily struggle with globals. While the buff is dispellable, this offers great dispel protection for stronger talents such as Rapid Contagion and Dark Soul. Next up, on the level 25 row, again, there's only one option, and that's Absolute Corruption. This again follows the theme of being the least global intensive, and is just a nice talent that adds some duration to your corruption and provides a much better benefit than Writhe and Agony, while Siphon, you again just lack the globals to keep active. Moving down to the level 30 row, it's normally been a clear-cut choice in the majority of games. Demon Skin is a very strong passive which adds to your Soul Leech absorption, and that will for sure most part remain the same. Although in Shadowlands, Dark Pack did receive a buff. This will make it potentially an option versus very bursty compositions where you just need that added defensive at the right time. On the level 35 row, your default pick is going to be Phantom Singularity. This is good instant damage, undispellable, and even the healing adds up. While Vile Taint could potentially see some play against teams that look to line of sight, Phantom Singularity just wins overall. Shadowlands has added some great additions to the level 40 row, as Demonic Circle is now baseline and a new talent has been put in its place, Owl of Terror. This is now additionally instant cast, helping a ton with kiting, dealing with melee, or just securing instant CC. On the level 45 row, Grimoire of Sacrifice is the preferred choice. This is mainly due to pet survivability being so dire, although Warlocks have received Fell Domination pets, which are insanely squishy and have a baseline 6 second cast, and the 3 minute CD is just too long to not get punished on. This talent simply just gives you some added damage and removes this problem altogether. That being said, if pet survivability gets buffed, this could potentially change and make Haunt more appealing. And that leaves us with our final row, where Dark Soul Misery seems to be the clear choice, providing you with a huge boost to haste, although this is in Shadowlands now, for whatever reason, a magic buff, meaning heavy purge teams, especially mages, make Dark Soul a lot weaker. And in its place, you can instead pick up Creeping Death, giving you some added damage. So if the team has purges, pick Creeping. If not, go nuts with Dark Soul. Okay, with standard talents covered and out of the way, let's now take a look at the go-to PvP talents. Shadowlands brings the addition of a new and very strong talent, which you'll never want to be without, and that's Rapid Contagion. Having a 30 second CD, this ability will buff all of your dots, causing them to tick faster and giving you some noteworthy burst damage. To pair up with Rapid Contagion, there has been another new addition which is also now a must-have talent, and that's Rampant Afflictions. Unstable Affliction has been changed to now only be up on one target, while Rampant Afflictions enables you to have UA on up to three. This is super important for not only AoE rotting and Malefic Rupture efficiency, but also Dispel Protection. So with those two PvP talents being so vital to your overall damage output, it leaves one slot, and for this you have an option, either Nether War or Demon Armor. Demon Armor obviously you'll want versus any melee or cleaves, whereas you'll want Nether Ward up against casters, so swap these around depending on what you're facing. So this is what both your normal and PvP talents will look like. Alright, so now it's time to move on to the new stuff added in with Shadowlands, Covenants, Soulbinds, and Conduits. To start, let's cover Covenant Choice. Currently, you're unable to change these, but hopefully that will change, so picking the correct one for the start of the expansion is going to be extremely important. For Affliction, as with a lot of casters right now, there is one clear winner when it comes to PvP, and that's Venthyr. As with all Covenants, Venthyr offers you two abilities, one Covenant ability and one class ability. The Covenant ability for Venthyr is Door of Shadows. This allows you to cast a Sword of Teleport, adding some great mobility to Affliction's kit, which you can use to kite, secure instant Howl of Terrors, or just chase your enemies. Extra mobility is always welcome. While the Warlock Covenant ability for Venthyr is impending 
Lightning Catastrophe. This ability sends forth a cloud that deals some decent damage and also applies a random curse to the target. The dot applied from this counts towards Malefic Rupture dot count, so it's just some nice added damage and also utility if you get the correct curse on the target. These are both very nice additions, but the main reason for selecting Venthyr is the Soulbind, which we'll cover now. After selecting your Covenant, you'll unlock Soulbinds, which are essentially passive skill trees, which you'll progress through as you journey through Shadowlands. There are three Soulbinds available for each Covenant. For Venthyr, your three options are Nagia the Mistblade, Theotar the Mad Duke, and General Draven. Currently, the go-to without a doubt is the first one that you unlock. Nagia the Mistblade. Following this route, you're able to pick up some very strong passives, and the main reason, as mentioned, that you want to pick up Venthyr. And these are Fancy Footwork, which gives you some added mobility after using your Door of Shadows, Familiar Predicaments, which is probably the best soulbind out of them all, providing you with a much needed reduction to interrupts, snares, and root effects by 25%, and then the final passive, which is Thrill Seeker, providing you with a nice bonus to haste. Okay. So you may have noticed from the Soulbind tree that there are some blank slots. Well, these are filled out with what's known as a conduit. Conduits come in three different categories, endurance, potency, and finesse. Depending on your Soulbind, you'll have a different combination of the three. Selecting the recommended route from above gives you two potency conduits, one finesse, and one endurance. For your first conduit slot, which is an endurance, there are three options to pick from, accrued vitality, diabolic bloodstone, and resolute barrier. Out of these three, the clear winner is, of course, the added defensive value from Resolute Barrier, giving you the ability to get your unending resolve back a lot faster. Then for the next slot, which is a finesse, there are four options, Fell Celerity, Killrog's Cunning, Shade of Terror, and Demonic Momentum. These, as you can see, are all actually very strong and can have a lot of value. Well, as of right now, our Warlock Consultant Chanimal recommends taking Demonic Momentum, simply for the much needed added mobility although this conduit could change a lot depending on situation and nerfs or buffs. Then for our last two conduits, we have two potency slots. There are again four options to choose from, and these are Rolling Agony, Cold Embrace, Corrupting Leer, and Focused Malignancy, with one Covenant-specific conduit buffing your Covenant class ability, which is Catastrophic Origin for the Venthyr. You are unable to pick the same conduit twice, so as we have two slots, the best options are Focused Malignancy and Rolling Agony. The latter aids greatly in assisting with Global Bloat, and Focused Malignancy offers a nice boost to your burst damage. So this will finish up with our Soulbind and Conduit Tree looking like this. The final step that you'll need in order to make your Warlock Arena ready is picking up your best Legendary. Currently, you're only able to equip one of these at a time, although this is subject to change later in the expansion. For now, the best choice for Affliction is the Sacralash's Dark Strike, which can be applied to either legs or feet. This is exactly the same as it was in Legion, buffing your Corruption damage by 15%, as well as also causing your corruption to put a slow up on the target for as long as your corruption remains. This slow is incredibly overpowered and removes the need for you to ever apply Curse of Exhaustion as it's simply a 50% slow at all times. The control this provides is just unrivaled. This was, as its first rendition, a 60% slow and got nerfed down to 50%. Even despite this nerf, it is still without a doubt the go-to. But if it does get nerfed, then a good alternative is the new rendition of Cephas's Ring from Legion, Cephas's Proclamation. This acts almost as a mini Relentless, which also doubles up on providing you with a nice bonus to secondary stats when you crowd control, interrupt, or dispel an enemy. All right then everyone, that concludes our first look at Affliction Warlocks in Shadowlands. That should be everything you need in order to get started, ready for the release of Season 1. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and check back for our follow-up video, which will include any updates to this information, along with a more advanced look at how to deal damage, perfect your playstyle, and even which compositions are set to be best for your spec. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.